and it's late on our end. It's even later on the East Coast. And so I'll just conclude quickly with um, two Ninth Circuit cases that were published two weeks apart, both titled Sing v. Garland, <laughs> which, and, and um, I actually did, I counted the second one. The podcast has been around, my podcast has been around for two and a half years. I have done 10 10 petition for reviews where the petitioner's name is last name is Singh. <laughs> so popular name in India. Yeah. Um, they both involve the man party, M-A-N-N, which I'm no expert, but I do believe is a uh it's a pro-Sikh political party that um at, at certain aspects of it do advocate for an independent Sikh uh, state in India, but you know, not not no expert on that for sure. But they're both favorable. In the asylum type context, the first thing published on August 30th, 2022, I like for this, and it's a motion to reopen for change country conditions. And the quote is, the country condition evidence reveals a marked change from the conditions at the time of Singh's original hearing in 1997. Mm -hmm. So that is, I always love doing country condition evidence based on what the circuits are saying this is the ninth circuit saying it seems that conditions have gotten worse since the late 90s such that maybe you should be reopening and i bet you that there are a lot of Sikh individuals ordered removed in the late 90s early 2000s that you can then come in with a case like this and say look the ninth circuit says it's worse reopen so we can do an asylum case now let's, let's back up the procedure so i can learn more about this so they originally filed the asylum case in 1997 they failed they just stayed, they didn't get removed. And 20 years later, they try to reopen based on new conditions, even though it's past the one year uh, filing deadline. You sound like a, a nice trial attorney. <laughs> <Jack Ashravi. laughs> it, it, is that what's happening? That is what's happening. And it actually gets worse. The IJ found Mr. Singh not credible in 1997. So this case also um, brings into play a matter of FSN, where the night where the BIA was saying that even if conditions have gotten worse, if you want to reopen and there's a prior adverse credibility, you got to get over that adverse credibility first. And you have to produce new evidence to show that you were credible way back then. It's a very hard, yeah. high burden. But in this case, the Ninth Circuit is kind of assuming FSN is OK. But the evidence that Mr. Singh provided might have actually shown that he was being credible all those years ago. But that's only the first hurdle. And not the hurdle that I find as interesting, although it, it is interesting. The second hurdle, though, is have conditions changed at all? And this does seem to be the Ninth Circuit saying conditions are worse for Sikhs now than they were in the late 90s. But so, yes, procedurally, this individual was ordered removed in 1997, and he has been hanging around for 25 yeah. years. It, it, you know, when it comes to these country conditions, it's for immigration lawyers, you really got to be familiar and, and keep up on the politics and stuff to really do a good asylum case. And just doing immigration in certain countries, you got to know the, the nuances. Like I deal with Iranian cases and sometimes like I'll have like people who don't deal with Iranian cases give timelines on how like a marriage case would be. I'm like, oh, no, no, that's not having an Iranian case. We have admin processing. We have no interviews. And so it's like if you're doing a asylum case, for example, for a Sikh individual, you got to stay on top of what's going on. And I mean, you have to do the research and you can see court cases, but it's just uh, to develop high level like practice and so you're doing a good job. You got to be really on top of facts and yeah. geopolitics and all this kind of stuff. So, so tell me, sir, why do you fear the Shah? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's why. But I think that's what attracts a lot of people to uh, immigration law. I love it. I, I, yeah. I get my country condition briefings every day from foreign policy. There's a daily bulletin and I read Foreign Affairs magazine every two months and they've got these great deep dives. I mean, Russia, I've been filing motions to reopen for Russians or against the war in Ukraine. Conditions have yeah. changed domestically for Russians. Armenians and Azerbaijan, those two countries went to war a year and a half ago. And how are ethnic Armenians treated in Azerbaijan, for example? I, I, I think I, it's one of the things I like the most. And you, 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 you can, you can, it can, it's really the intersection of foreign affairs and, and domestic yeah. immigration law. And that's what the people like immigration got everything, you got corporate aspects, it's got criminal aspects, it's got political science, it's got everything in the world because it's dealing with humans, it's here. So that's yeah. a great area for law practice.